Hello, my name is Vince Romo. The show that you're about to see is about barrio lifestyle, about being raised in the barrio, being from the barrio, the do's, the don'ts, the what's and the where's, the who's in the house. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to Barrio Driven. Today I'm sitting down with Johnny Chang from Oceanside Watching. Johnny, thank you for sitting here with us today. Thank you, brother. Uh, the pleasure is truly ours. Um, if you can, just give yourself a quick, uh, brief introduction to the audience, and um, then we'll get started. You know, shout out to Barrio Driven. Thank you guys for you know having me on. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm Johnny. I'm from OS, and I. Um, you know, I'm, I grew up in the San Gabriel Valley, um, all around Monterey Park, South San Gabriel, Alhambra, um, and, and joined a gang when I was really young and uh, went through the whole system, you know, YA to jail to penitentiary. And um, now I'm actually uh, changed my life around. I'm, I'm doing prison ministry. So I go to the prisons and talk to the, the inmates, people with LWAP, lifers, whatever. and. Yeah, we're just trying to uh, do a positive thing on the community. Wow, well, right on, right on. That's yes, to be commended. Thank you, bro. So, here we go. Thank you for sitting in the hot seat. Absolutely. As in case you don't know, not everybody wants to sit there. <laughs> but we talked a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, because we, we hit you guys harder than, I think, most podcasts. Yeah. Tell me about your childhood. Uh, yeah, my childhood was pretty, pretty bad. You know, um, I had both my parents, but my, my father was, um, you know, an alcoholic. He kind of had issues and, and with anger and typical uh, Asian, Asian household. You know, I'm Chinese. So uh, my dad, my mom, she was a um, Taoist Buddhist. So she, um, you know, was kind of hardcore. Traditionally, she tried to instill in us things like karma, doing good to people, you know, being positive. Yeah. What you put in the world, you get out, you know, but uh yeah, at the, you know, I would get beat up um, a lot, you know, by my, my, my father because he would have those rages uh, wow. of alcohol. But uh, would your father um, also beat up your mom as well? Or? Yeah, yeah. My mom also got got was, you know, sadly a couple times where she was getting beat too. And um, so was, you were raised in an abusive home. Yeah. Do you, do you have any siblings? Yes, I have one older brother and he was also beat. He was well. also uh, being beat on. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. What would you get beat up for, John? Uh, the, the one thing I remember the most getting beat up was I had actually gotten jumped uh, when I was 10 years old and um, by some Hispanics, you know, around yeah. the area and in San Gabriel Valley. And uh, they took my backpack, they took my shoes, you know, and, and when I went home, uh, I remember my dad was like, where's your stuff? You know, and at that time I wasn't really getting good grades, you know, yeah. and stuff. So he assumed that um, I actually was just lying, like I threw my backpack away and just made up a whole story. So um, not only did I get jumped, but when I went home, I got beat up for that too. And well, uh, I remember that. Yeah. So you took two beatings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm gonna say that it's safe to say that I was abused a little bit as well too, you know? And, um, you know, physically kind of so I could relate. Yeah. What, what that does to a young kid, and I, I tell people this, maybe I'm wrong, um, mm -hmm. For maybe we're different but for me the first thing that brought for me it brought it brought hurt it brought sorrow and mm -hmm. then from the sorrow it turned to anger mm -hmm. then the anger turned to hate i don't know if that's how i went with you yeah and um but that's yeah. usually the cycle yeah. so you're being beat on by your father mm -hmm. not only not only you but your brother your mother as well too yes and um then you're also being i don't want to say bullied but you're having a hard time because of some of the homies yes. of, of rasa yeah. You know, um, as you know, we haven't always saw eye to eye. So yeah. to sit here with him is a blessing. Absolutely. You know, because these are this is very two two different cultures. Yes. You know, and um, but this is what body driven is about. You know, we want to interview everybody. You know, um, so growing up being beat on, mm -hmm. being beat on, um, what was what was your first crime, Johnny? 
Uh, so my first crime, I mean, it was real petty stuff, like, you know, joyriding and little, you know, they would say GTAs, but yeah, yeah. little joyriding and stuff. Yeah. How, how old were you in this? Uh, I started when I was about 11. 11 years yeah, old? Yeah, 11 years old. I was with so homies and I would... You're still in cars at 11? Yeah. <laughs> how old were you when you first got, got busted? Uh, I was 12. 12? 12 years old, What'd yeah. you get busted for? Uh, dissuading a witness for the benefit of a gang. Really? Yeah. So we, it was originally a car, uh, kidnapping slash robbery, but, um, you know, I was with a group of people and being the youngest one, you usually kind of take the rap for yeah. it, you know, <laughs> yeah. but I didn't know that they were going to give me four years in, in YA. So for that, yeah, for that. And, and because of the gang affiliation, yeah. the people who I was with were validated gang members and, and, and whatnot. So yeah. Yeah, and you weren't, is it safe to say that you weren't a part of the neighborhood yet, your neighborhood? No, I was a part of it. So you were already yeah, in? Yeah, I had got put on at 12, and three months after that, I, got, I caught the case, my at, first case. At 12 years old? Yes. What did they call you? They call me ill. Why did they call you ill? <laughs> uh, mentally ill, I guess. They would think that I was crazy because I would go from zero to 100, back to zero and calm, and so kind of earned the name <laughs> wow. through that, yeah. Do you think that you suffered maybe some mental trauma because of your childhood yeah i would say i think everyone has some kind of you know mental trauma um especially growing up in a, in a lifestyle that i did in a household that i did yeah i think for me peculiarly i had a really big sense of uh trusting myself because i really couldn't trust anybody i remember when i was young i didn't trust anybody um probably because of my father's situation yeah. and but i trusted only myself so you know, why I joined a gang, a lot of people think is, oh, because, you know, the, the glamorous lifestyle or, you know, or, or trauma or whatever. But for me, I would say it started at my heart. I really wanted to only believe in myself. So I did everything that I wanted to do um, because I thought that doing everything I wanted to would make me happy. Things like homework, things I didn't want to do, studying, I didn't yeah. do because I thought it wouldn't make me happy. But eventually it led me to this type of lifestyle. Yeah. Being in YA, mm -hmm. <clears throat> describe YA to me. Uh, it's crazy, bro. It's gladiator school. You know, uh, you learn how to fight. It's it's all about gang banging. You know, it's it's yeah. it's a little bit of race, but there's. If I could sum it up mm, in one two words, it would be mind games. There's a lot of mind games in there. Yeah. You know, you, you you know you're fighting and you're you got to fight the whole car. If you know, yeah. like it's just all kinds of stuff, bro. Yeah. What was what was the, the most troubling thing that, that you occurred or that you've seen while in YA? I had seen some people, you know, get like stabbed up for the first time, you know, yeah. and you're like 12 years old seeing this type of stuff. It was pretty crazy. I had seen, um, I think the most troubling thing is how we can be that young yeah. and, and we were doing grown man stuff, man, like evil, crazy, crazy things that, I mean, even rapes and all. I've seen stuff like that happen, you know, and, and it was... It was crazy, but so, how kids can do that to each other. So at 12 years old, it's safe to say that you, you've already seen someone being cut up. Mm -hmm. You, since you mentioned rape, you, I'm sure you saw rape. Mm -hmm. Saw rape. You saw someone being stabbed. Yeah. Being, I'm sure he got. They probably got and cut him up pretty good. Yeah. How did that make you feel, man? Uh, it was it was pretty terrifying. You know, I'll be honest. You know, you get scared. I mean, anyone who's seen that, like. You know, when you join a gang, you think you're the big dog, you know, you yeah. want to prove yourself. But when you actually see that there's people really putting in work and going more, doing more crazier things than you on an intense level, then, yeah, you start to actually humble down a little bit and realize, like, man, but at that time, you got to stay what we call solid, right? You can't, yeah. you can't uh, punk out, you can't, you know, be a bitch or a leva or yeah. whatever. So yeah. when you think about it, you, you can't show it, you know, inside, though. Yeah, we're, you're scared, and I, I feel like everybody in there was, was like that, you know? You know, it was yeah. funny, I, I interviewed um, my homeboy, Gremlin, and um, he was talking about when he was incarcerated, he was saying, hey, you know what, you have to be tough, right, uh -huh. you know? And, yeah. um, and he was saying that, you know, but when it's just you and, and you're on your bunk and, and you're thinking, that's the only time that you could kind of calm down a little bit. Yes. But Absolutely. every time it's just, as you said, gladiator school. And that's, yeah. a, that's, that's a horrible way to, to live your life. Yeah, yeah. I learned, I learned the, like the two-second takeoff rule, you know, where 
if you feel disrespected, even yeah. though it's not a disrespectful thing, if you just take it that way, you got to take you, off within yeah. two seconds. Otherwise, yeah. it's like even if you take off like later on, it's they, they don't count it. You know what I mean? You're already did, labeled. Did you regret being there? Yeah, absolutely. I ain't gonna lie. I, I did regret it, but I couldn't let that affect me at that age because then I would start to miss home and and, yeah. and then I would I would see people kind of crumbling. Like I would I would notice. You know, I was very observant, even though I was twelve, seeing kids like just just rotting away yeah. because of overthinking, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So you're twelve years old. I'm gonna say you got out at sixteen. Yeah. Four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you got out. What's the first thing that you did? Uh, first thing I did was was go right back to the homies <laughs> and uh, eat food, eat good food. You know, they threw a little party basically, yeah. and you know, went went back with the homies. Yeah. Um, can I ask why? And the reason why I ask why is because talking to you, you you said that you regretted being in there. Mm -hmm. You said that you you seen all these things, mm -hmm. and you're like, dang man, look at what's going on. Yeah. Maybe you would have. Maybe a light would have went on and said, mm -hmm. man, hey, I did four years. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do no more. Yeah. This is what led me to being in here, right. being away from, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So uh, why I went back to it, honestly, at that time, I wasn't really sure. But as I reflect now, I could see that, you know, I did have a regret inside yeah. of my heart. I didn't want to do it, but I didn't know that my heart you know, was deceitful. Yeah. I didn't know that one minute just because I, I, I put my mind to something and I, and I feel that determination, in an instant it would switch, you know? And um, I didn't have the right connection, you know? I didn't have other people and I didn't have, uh, couldn't go back to my family, you know? And, and so, or at least at that time, I didn't think I could. And um, I felt like my homies were my family. So I, I, I thought I could actually maintain my lifestyle. Like, man, I, I've been there, I'm smarter now, you know? I, yeah. I got out, I, I could still kick it with the homies and also kind of live that right path, you know, play both sides of the fence, if you will. But I found out, you know, 67 days later, you know, that that that's, that wasn't that so, wasn't it. So 67 days later, you got busted again? Yeah, I got wow. busted. And this time I went to, got tried as an adult, um, two counts of uh, assault with deadly weapon, you so, know. Yeah, it was originally a robbery and, and, you know, got picked up in Pomona court. Well, and, what, hap what happened that night? Um, it was just a robbery gone wrong and, and, you know, we were kind of led to like a freeway shootout type of thing, you know, but we were chasing people and this and that. So, yeah, it was, it was. So you were shooting at enemies? Yeah. Shooting at a, a, a person that we were trying to rob. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. so at this point of your life, you're 16 years old, mm -hmm. you're, you're strapped up because I mean, what you're getting, what you got busted again for. Right. Um, tell me, as you mentioned the heart, mm -hmm. how was your heart feeling at that time, man? When I got caught or yeah. when? Oh, uh, I just felt like, here we go angry? again. Angry? Yeah. Were you angry? Were you like, I mean, talk yeah. to me. Yeah, Any was, remorse, anything? Uh, I only felt remorseful at the time for getting caught, yeah. you know, um, to be real. Uh, was I angry? Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're saying at 16 years old, you could have killed somebody and been all right with them? Mm, I think at that point, as sad as it, it is to say, probably. Really? Yeah, no, definitely. No, no regret at all, man, just. Yeah, I think at that point I was, I had a victimized heart and I didn't know it. You know, yeah. I felt like, you know what? If I can't live happy, why should somebody else live happy? That's you know? heavy. And um, that's heavy. I carried that everywhere I went. And on top of that, I feel like being in YA cultivated that mindset more because they would tell me things like, um, forget about your family. You know, they don't, they don't care about you. And a person like me, that resonated with me because I felt like my family didn't care about me. But the fact that we were in there, you know, they were explaining these things. And so I just was filled with a lot of anger and rage, honestly. Wow. Yeah. So you're getting tried as an adult mm -hmm. and um, convicted. Yes. How long did you go away for? Uh, so there I had 10 years at 85%. Wow. I, I pled out, actually. I wow. didn't take it to trial. You know, I knew that they had uh, witnesses and, you know, f pointing me out and stuff. So so you just, you said, hey, I did it. Yeah. This is what happened. And I'm just taking you away. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. How was prison? Uh, prison was different. 
Uh, well, I didn't yeah, know. you went to county, you went to prison, but right. yeah, talk to prison. Prison was um, much different. There was politics now involved. I yeah. mean, there's politics everywhere, of but course. but I didn't. <laughs> I remember like vividly going in there, and I'm like, man, I think that dude's from Asian boys, you know, and and yeah. they're, they're just like, yeah, but that doesn't matter, you know. And I'm like, what? That's a... And it it, it kind of hit me where the, whereas in YA it was gang banging, but in a prison it was all about race. You had to yeah. drop your flag. You had to drop your affiliation. Even you have to just go as the other car or the south siders or whatever it, you know you had yeah. to you had to you had to ride with that yeah. and so at that point i started to kind of it did something internally to me because uh for my neighborhood i wanted to sit, stay solid forever you know and that was mean that meant taking the beefs and just being you know like like solid basically you yeah. know but not forgiving nobody not ever being cool with anybody 100 you know or nothing so at the end of the day, yeah, prison was was different, man. It was a, I would say it was a culture shock, basically. You know, um, as I said, that we talked to many people on Body Driven, mm -hmm. and we've heard so many horror stories about when they're incarcerated in prison. Yeah. What was the worst thing that you've seen, or what was the worst thing that you partake of? The worst thing I've seen is probably just uh, somebody getting stabbed to death, and and they're tell they're, me about that. Yeah, it was some dudes, I can't say the, the race or whatever, yeah. but they were getting stabbed to death and I had seen them like, the dudes like holding his mouth, you know? And he's muttering like, help, help, help. But being different, a different race and a different car, we just had to act like we weren't, we didn't you, know. They couldn't even see it. How many times do you think they stabbed him? I don't know, that I, I just turned away to be real. I couldn't even really look at it, you know? I seen it for a little bit and I just looked away and then I felt that heaviness in my heart, like, dang, you know, whatever. So you actually did. felt something? Yeah, at that point I did, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's heavy that you've seen this individual. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, there's nothing you can do about it. Right. N nothing at all. Yeah. All, you have to, all you can do is just turn a blind eye. Yeah. Because if you were to go, there's some, some problems. Right, right. You yeah, know? It would cause a war. Huh? Yeah, there'd be, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so you did almost 10 years. Um, man, Johnny. So it's safe to say that, and, and how old are you now? So I'm 33 now. So you've yeah. done the YA time, you've done almost 14 years of your life. 12, 12 years, yeah. 12 years 12. of your life, and you're yeah. only 33. Yeah. <laughs> That's a long time for being only 33. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we get people here that are like 50 years old and right, they've right. done 10 years or whatever. Yeah. You're a young man still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever have any, and let me ask you a question, um, with your neighborhood, are you still like, you go to your neighborhood a lot still? Or do you? Yeah, we're all family. Right on. Know, and and uh, really we're family, you know, my brother's in it and some of the other homies' brothers is in it. So we're very tight knit. And um, yeah, we love each other. So it's always gonna be part of it. Now I'm not, you know, I I, I feel like I've graduated out of it, of yeah. course, and and doing all the prison stuff. But my homies support me, and I'm so thankful about that. You know, so. Yeah. And you, you go to church now, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me. Let me ask you a serious question. Sure. Let's say something happened to your brother, mm -hmm. because your brother's from the neighborhood, right? Mm -hmm. Are you able just to say, hey, you know what, the, if something were to happen, mm -hmm. would you be able to say, oh, well, you know what, I'm just, hey, it is what it is, or what, mm -hmm. and you're going to continue going to church? Mm -hmm. Or do you think that you would have that? That's a heavy question. That is. That's yeah. a heavy question. That's a, that's a good question, though, honestly. And um, honestly, when I think about that, um, so the way I, I think to preface this to answering this yeah. is, um, I learned not to trust myself, right? Because yeah. the way that if I if I follow Johnny's mindset back in the day, of course I would grab a gun, I would go and yeah. start looking for people, and you know get get my get back is what they yeah. call it. Yeah. But um, when I think about it now, when I live that way, following myself, trusting myself, believing in myself, um, you know I live miserably, and I hurt a lot of people, and I hurt myself, and I hurt my family. But when I think about it now, you know, if that was to happen to my brother, let's say, you know, I think yeah. about that often, or my son, I have a kid That's as heavy. well. I think about, well, if God allows, and is the creator of everything, yes, right? and he allows everything to happen, then 
who am I to say anything about it if he allows it? Now, I, I want to protect my brother. You know, of I course, would die for course. my family. Yes. But who would want to protect my brother more than me? God. So I leave that into God's hands. So with that being said, if that was to happen, of course, it would eat me up inside. Of course, I would have to be fighting the demons and going against my thoughts and yeah. not wanting to, you know, do it. But I believe at the core of my heart, is, is changed in the aspect that God is the one that has to watch over everything. He's the one that has to take care of it. And basically, He is a master, and He's responsible for everything. And that's how I look at it. And you, you know what would hit me heavy, what you said right now, mm -hmm. is that before you came to know God, mm -hmm. you, were, you were miserable. Yes. You were in misery. Yes. And so you would ultimately ask God to, to help you if that situation, God forbid, yes. ever were to happen. Absolutely. But... Gratefully not. I, I, we noticed that you have a lot of tats. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you think we could see some of those tats? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So if you could, um, if you could explain some of, of your ink, you know, yeah. some of your tats, what, what do we got? What is all this right here? So we got a, it's a, it's an arm sleeve that yeah. connects to the chest, to a chest plate. It's a full sleeve, they call it. Uh, it's a, a snake. So I'm a, my Chinese zodiac is a snake. And you know, there's some chrysanthemum flowers. It's like an Asian flower, yeah. a Chinese flower that represents like peace and you know prosperity and stuff. We got wind bars. It's just a background, basically. Yeah. But yeah. And the the neck right here. Neck. This is a food dog. A uh, food dog is basically a Chinese lion. Uh, they're guardians. They're protectors. Um, they're people. You know who uh, are they're, they're animals, spiritual animals. Yeah. But yeah, it's very symbolic of Chinese culture. So I noticed yeah. you have like like the teardrop almost but it's, it's a no yeah and yeah. i that's for your your neighborhood yes yes mm -hmm. yeah um and what else do we got going on so here? we got the dragon um you know it's also symbolic of a guardian type of mythical creature in chinese um also my brother too he's he's a uh, uh, year of the dragon and um yeah it's it's same thing got some different flowers these are peonies asian flowers right on we got the, the w nationals w for, for your know. neighborhood yeah yeah it's right. you're not a nationals fan i assume right. so, <laughs> like if you could turn around for us that'd be great yeah well you have some you have some amazing ink on you thank you bro. what what does exactly that all this who is that exactly so that's um general chang fei he's uh basically my ancestor so anyone with the chang last name yeah uh, basically, he's the ancestor, and um, he was one of the three kingdoms. He was one of the, the the big dogs back in the day. You know, real big dude, warrior, Asian imperial warrior. Um, yeah, and, wow. and I, he's riding a, a, another mythical creature called the Chirin, which is people say Kirin. You know how you see yeah. the beer Kirin? Yeah. yeah, it's basically a dragon horse basically so he's riding that horse and oh. there's a lot of detail in it you know yeah stuff like no that. it, it yeah. It's, it's it's beautiful now yeah. the last thing i want to ask about is about the writing mm -hmm. fortunately i don't read yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but sure. what does that say so it says my name in chinese which which literally translates to solid like wow. solid and that's uh like so it's strength and balance so so um it basically means like um, if you literally translate it, it means like thick and strong, so like wide and thick, basically. Yeah. And that's basically meaning representative of something that's solid; it's unmovable. So. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> All right. Uh, you you could put it back on. For sure. So um, before we hit your neighborhood, because as you guys know, um, body driven, we pride ourselves. We go to the neighborhood. You know, we we walk and talk. You know, I wanna. We're gonna go to your childhood home. Sounds good. I want to know the places that that you have the, the most heaviest remorse. I also want to know about your joys out there because mm -hmm. they weren't always bad times. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, right, being, right. being part of a neighborhood, as you said, you are a family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so I want to know it all. Before we go um, to your neighborhood, where is the one place that you have the, the most remorse that you could talk about? The thing that hits Johnny the heavy. The mm -hmm. thing that, that you say that, you know, how do you sleep at night? And let me ask a question. Mm -hmm. How do you sleep at night? Do you sleep well? Yeah, I sleep good. You know, um, I, I, so I feel like um, before I had a lot of issues with sleeping. I was insomnia. I had to do drugs and self-medicate, you know. Yeah. But, uh, for me, what really changed was the, the core of my heart. You know, I believe that 
um, after receiving salvation and listening and learning about the gospel, yeah, I was able to really find that inner peace. Um, I'm no longer as a loose cannon or knucklehead as I used to be. Right? Yeah, but um, and people think that that comes with maturity, but there's a lot of people that I know that you know in their 50s and 60s, you know. Cannot, oh yeah, they're still out sleep. there. Yeah. yeah, they're still out there. Right. So what is your biggest regret? Where's the the, the place that you're going to take us to mm -hmm. that moves you as a man? Mm -hmm. I wish so, this day wouldn't have happened. <clears throat> I wish this wouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. I think that spot, to be honest, I, I, I wouldn't want to take because it was a, a spot where my homie got, got killed, you know, and it was actually because of, of, uh, of from, you. Yeah. So that's, you, that's tell spot. us about that. Yeah, so there was a, a robbery that we had planned, you know, when I had first gotten out of prison. And um, I tried to try to live a right path after getting out. But yeah. um, being a, a two strike felon, you know, and I, it's I easy to get drawn in. Real right. Yeah. And I wasn't able to find a job. So we had planned to rob this, this drug dealer. And um, my plan was to go to the right of the car. We were going to set up a, a, a buy, basically, but go to the right of the car. He was going to go to the left. Uh, but when I stepped to the right of the car, he stepped in front of me. So naturally, I went the other way, you know. I heard gunshots ring out, three gunshots. And, um, you know, I, I thought it was actually my homie, to be honest, who was shooting, yeah. you know. And I was like, dang, he didn't even give the dude a chance, you know. And But then the car sped off, and um, I see my homie laying there dying, you know. And I remember the sounds. I remember the... I don't know the best gurgling. way, gurgling. But even that, it was more like, uh, like when you, f it sounded like someone who was knocked, uh, who had the wind knocked out of him. It was just like a real eerie sound, you know, and it was extreme. But anyway, so yeah, he was dying, and then he he died basically in my arms, man. And and I felt bad about that, you know. So how old was he? Uh, he at the time was also like eighteen. Eighteen years old. Yeah, he was a young. Like, wow, he was young. younger. Yeah. To, to his family. Yeah. Um, if you do see this, you know, we yeah. send our condolences. Yeah. Um, so at 18 years old, this young man's life is is already on your hands. Yeah. Um, oh. and, and you're seeing him die. Mm -hmm. You're seeing this young man die. Mm -hmm. um, that's a big burden to carry because yeah. seeing an individual die, as you know firsthand, that's that's a very it's a very traumatizing thing uh, absolutely you changes, know very, changes. Very, oh, yeah exactly it, it changes you it changes your heart it changes the, just the person that you are and seeing this especially when you're carrying that guilt right do you do you still feel that guilt uh i honestly don't anymore because i understand what the gospel is you yeah. know i just out of respect for him i don't want him to be remembered as that yeah. somebody got you know, and then glorifying murdered. this side, and yeah, I I totally understand yeah. that. So, um, but me personally, you know, uh, I was able to realize in the Bible that I was born as a sinner, yeah. and um, I didn't choose to, you know, be a sinner. So just like me, I'm, I'm Chinese. I didn't choose to be Chinese, but yeah. it was passed down to me. Yeah. Likewise, sin was inherited for of people course. who don't know, you know, exactly. And um, so the sins that I was a, a imperfect person. Um, trying to produce perfection and that's why I became miserable I became empty and I felt this loneliness for a very long time that I didn't know how to get rid of yeah but I realized that um, who are the people that need to see a doctor it's the sick people yeah right most and, definitely and healthy people good people they don't need to see a doctor likewise good people holy people they don't need yeah. God you know it was people like me and people like you yeah. and who need God so when I figured that out I was able to see oh that's right Jesus Christ died on the cross and he washed all of my sins, past, present, and future. Wow. And I was able to change and now I'm giving hope to communities and going on soft white underbelly, shout out hoodstocks, yeah. everything. So it's 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 been really um, a blessing, bro. Wow. Yeah. And now body driven. And now body was driven. Yeah. <laughs> well, right now, Johnny is gonna take us to his body room. We're gonna go, we're gonna walk the streets and um, Continue watching. We're out. So right now we're at basically 
This is where you grew up, yeah. basically, right? Yes, sir. So this is this is it right here. Yeah. What um? What's the, what's the name of this apartments? Uh, it's called Ramona Gardens Apartments, but they changed it to A A Gardens Apartments. Yeah, I think because it got mixed up with the Ramona Gardens over where Big Hazard is at oh, down yeah. the street, but. Yeah, it's it's there. It's number two. It's it's part of the same people. It was lo Section Eight, low income as well over here. Are we able to go in there, Dan? Uh, what, what, uh, where was your? your actually, apartment? mine's was right here in the back. You could probably see it if you, Wait, if you let's, just let's walk, walk over. Yeah. Let's walk over there. So, what um, what memories are are coming to to mind right now as we're walking to your childhood home? Uh. Just a lot of uh, good memories, bad memories. Uh, my homie lived back here and then committed suicide. And committed in jail. suicide. Yeah, and, and it makes me. What, what what happened? What happened that night? Man? Uh, he he had sent me a letter, you know, and 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 he was going. I, he was a tagger, one of a really known, well known tagger out here, you know. Uh, um, I can smell weed here. Yeah. <laughs> smell weed. Yeah. I would live right here. Not that. Not that. The, not that window, but on the bottom right here. On the bottom, right? Yeah, the bottom. We, would, and we, would, we would fight back here. There's like a little opening back here. Yeah. We would, we would get down, you know, and, um, but it was really tight knit, actually, you know. Living over here, it's, there's a lot of Hispanics and uh, Asians lived in here too when I, when I was there and a couple blacks too. My homie that, you know, passed away and committed suicide, passed away, he he was uh, African-American. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was my homie and he's a real well-known dude from out here and yeah, man, rest in peace to him, you know? And he, and he, yeah. Wow, that's a, yeah. that's a shame, man. Yeah. That's a shame, you know? The, yeah. Um, and you're saying that he wrote you a letter before he did that? Yeah, yeah. There was a letter that. What was in that letter? Uh, he just talked about it was. It was just about, hey man, stay up. I love you, you know. Um, you know, I'm sorry that we couldn't we couldn't hang out more often. It confirmed that he did it. That he had already was gone. Time to, yeah. I guess he did it either that night. I don't know what time he did it. I think he did it that day that he wrote it. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's a well well known beloved guy, man. And. Uh, yeah, we yeah, we, we sent our, our condolences as well yeah. to to his family. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. So this is it, man. The childhood home. Yeah, bro. This is where your father would abuse you. Yeah. This is where your father would abuse your mom. Yeah. Abuse your brother. How's your relationship with your father now? You know, it's really good, actually. You know, it's we really good. Uh, yeah, we we we. Um, we rekindled, bro, over the over the church, and uh, so your dad goes to church as well. He comes to church. Wow. Yeah, so <clears throat> when I first got out, was it hard to forgive him with everything that he did to you? Yeah, of course. But the amazing thing is, I had the pastor at the time, and the pastor had told me that, um, you know, I could see that you have a lot of emptiness inside of your heart. And I was shocked because I thought I hit it really well, you know, yeah. but, and I thought I was the only one that felt empty and, and void and, you know, but pastor told me that the reason why you feel empty is actually because, not just because of your father, but because you're an imperfect person trying to produce perfect results. Wow. And if you're imperfect and you're trying to be perfect, you're going to keep falling short. So you keep, you keep feeling this emptiness. Yeah. You know, and the more you try, the more you fail. In the end, you get this mentality, excuse my language, like, fuck it. Yeah. Man, I'm going to do whatever then. And, yeah. and, and and when he said that, I'd never heard anybody say that before. Yeah. So he broke it down in, a, in, in such a good way, you know. And uh, he said, uh, he said, he told me about the brake, like a car. He used the analogy of a car. He said that uh, the car has a braking system and an accelerator. And the, the brake must overcome the accelerator. Wow. Otherwise, the car will crash. So he said he likened the accelerator to our desires. Like we want to do, make money, you know, have, have uh, you know, cars, clothes, women, whatever. If we don't control those things, yeah. then we'll crash out basically. So the car, same thing. The brake has to control the car, the accelerator. Other yeah. Even if it's a Lamborghini, no one will drive it without brakes. You understand what I'm saying? So he started to explain that, that he, he was uh, the uh, braking system for me. And uh, that's when he gave me my first task. He said, how was your relationship with your father? Oh, I hate my 
you know, I want to kill him. I feel like I joined a gang because I was I, I don't talk yeah. to him, you know. He didn't visit me in prison. All this stuff came to wow. me. But um, <clears throat> the pastor told me, the pastor told me, when you see your father, yeah, apologize to him. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, it didn't make sense to me. You know, I was like, no, nah, I'm You're not the one being abused. Yeah. You're the one that has gone through right. all this hell and turmoil. Yeah. And he wants you to apologize to him. Right. Wow. And then, so I asked him, man, explain yourself, you know? Yeah. Why, 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 why do I, I didn't ask to be born. He had a responsibility and he, and he beat me and he, yeah. made, you know, and then he said, you know, Johnny, you're right. Okay. So what's the problem? He said, but because you're right that he didn't listen to you, he beat you and all that, you're also miserable. And right there, I was shocked. Like, as right as you are, you're also miserable. Go out, you see people with good families, you envy that, don't you? And I was like, that's right. And he says, you want to have a relationship, but you couldn't, right? And I said, yeah. So if you just accept what I say and just try it out, what's the worst that can happen? So at that time, I just, I realized he was trying to give me that braking system that I never had before. Yeah. I had nothing but pride. I was yeah. Cool. Yeah. But um, when that happened, I remember just calling my dad and uh, my dad was like, what do you want? You know, it, it wasn't wow. even like, a, it wasn't even on a positive note. It came out of his mouth. So immediately my anger arose, you know, like, yeah. but I kept thinking about because he knew me, he knew I was empty, he must know something. And for that first time, I, I, I distrusted myself and I just followed what he said. And I called him and I said, Dad, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I wasn't a good son. I'm sorry that I joined the gang. I'm sorry that I fought you too. I'm sorry that I didn't live up to your standards. And the crazy thing is my father started crying. Wow. I've never seen my father cry. And when he started crying, like he got so emotional, he couldn't really speak. But then he said, no, son, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for being a bad father. I'm sorry. He said, uh, <clears throat> no, I'm sorry for being a bad father. I'm sorry for not being able to control my alcohol and drinking. Yeah. And, um, I really, I really wish I could do better as a father, and I'm sorry. And we hugged it out, bro. Twenty something years of um, pain and resentment. It was gone wow. like that. Wow. And um, yeah, it was right here. You know, we, we grew up here, and, and yeah, it was just, you know, it was an amazing thing. And now we have a great relationship. I don't resent him. I realized that he was fighting his demons too. Yeah. We're all living yeah. this crazy thing called life. We're trying to navigate it. Yes. There is no manual to raise no. people and you know, so pastor showed me that, hey, one time, if you put down your own righteousness, you can accept it and begin to make peace with it. And that's what I started doing, bro. And um, yeah, that's what changed. You know, at this wow. point, it reminds me of all of that. You know, there was bad times. Him beating my mom yeah. and, you know, we got shot at. You know, people came here and did all that. But at the end of the day, there's all beautiful memories, too. We can go to, let's go to a school up here. Okay. Yeah, we'll go to school. All right, all let's, right. Go. let's go. Well, you know what? Um. That, that was heavy, man, when you were sharing the story over there, and, yeah. and I'm grateful to you. Absolutely. Because you know what? There's a lot of people that um, that are battling that, that are going through that, yeah. that have horrible relationships with their father. Right. That, you know, their fathers are abusing them, you know, mentally, physically. Yeah. Even some cases, I mean, sexually. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, to be able to forgive your father after 20 something years now you said 20 something years was yeah. it 20 something years that you guys didn't really talk yeah yeah it's really been, uh, well from when i was young all the way up i've always resented my father because i was getting hit if, since i could since remember, you could remember yeah uh, five years old you know and um and the time that i i actually spoke to him was when i got out which was like in my 20s you know so i just counted it as you know like yeah. i never actually had a real relationship with, with your father, father. Um, okay. Let me ask what one thing we didn't ask. We didn't we didn't talk about your mom very much. No. Um, what was your? I mean, 
your mom didn't try to like prevent that or what yeah. i mean i know she's getting hit herself but yeah, i mean yeah. would she i mean would she say anything yeah she would she would and that would just um you know but as my mom as the asian culture is they're very submissive towards their husbands you know yeah and my mom was always like really respectful you know you always respect the man of the household yeah it's very um like that you know and so I don't blame my mom at all. In the beginning, before I found God, I really hated my mom too. Like, really? I was like, why are you, you know, why allowing, are you allowing this? this, bro? Yeah. You're, you're supposed to be a mom. But I realized that, you know, she was stuck in between that too, you know, her kids and also her husband, you know, who she cherished and loved as well, even though he was doing all of that. Yeah. She could see that it wasn't him, that it was, it was something else, you know, like the alcohol or the yeah. rage or whatever else. So... At the end of the day, you know, she and up until now, they're still married and they they're really happy. Well, my mom also goes to church. My brother goes to church. So it was all something that wow. when I seen it, I thought it was a, a curse, but it was it, ten, and it ended up being a blessing. You know, just like me going to YA and going to prison at 12 years old and all that. Yeah, I thought it was a curse. I'm like, what am I doing here? You know, I'm going to be a monster. But because of my past, I'm able to now go in there and understand the people who reach the bottom of the bottom, the lowest of the low. And, um, you know, I can I can I can resonate even with people who haven't been to prison because everyone feels that depression, that void, yeah. that emptiness, that fear. So, yeah, I think uh, when I look at my life now, it's such a blessing. You know, it's like I'm always happy. I'm always peaceful. And it's it's not because I want it to be, but God led it that way. Yeah. No, most definitely. Yeah. Um, if there if there's one thing that you could take back, what would that be? One thing that I could take back. Man, that's a good question. Honestly, there's a lot of things. But if it was just one thing. Give me one. I think I would take back the things that I said to my father, actually. Wow. Um, that caused him to just, I could see how much pain I actually caused him, you know. I never told my dad I loved you. And I never told my dad, you know, anything nice because prior to, you know, yeah. prior to, to, to rekindling. What I said was, I, I remember telling my dad that you're gonna die old. And you're gonna die alone. And um, if, if, if you don't float your liver, basically, if you don't, if, if the if the alcohol doesn't take you, yeah, then, you know, you'll die this way and I'll never see you again. And um, I never really seen my dad cry a lot. Yeah. But when I said that to him, I could see him tearing up like and he was like he wasn't even mad or anything. I was expecting him to just blow up at me. Yeah. But he didn't. Well, and, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, even though we're driving. You know, your dad can still hear, mm -hmm. and I'm sure he's gonna see this. <laughs> Whatever it is you wanna say to your dad, oh. say it. Oh. I've told him already, but what I said to him was, you know, that I understand now, you know, that I have a, a kid as well, and I didn't know your heart. I didn't know how hard it was for an immigrant to come to America with a hundred dollars in his pocket and provide for a wife uh, uh, and two kids, two bad kids too. And um, I apologize, honestly, that I didn't know your struggle. I just had tunnel vision. And, um, you know, now that I, I have my own, you know, and, and I can understand your heart just a little bit, that you tried your best, even though, you know, you had your inner demons and everyone makes mistakes, but it's okay. You know, it's okay because even when I make mistakes towards God, he doesn't chop my arm off and discipline me, you know. Yep. He accepts me and he receives me. And so, you know, I'm so thankful and, and I apologize for, for being the way that I was, but at the same time, I'm so thankful that what the bond we have is not something that a lot of people and their parents have, you know, and that's not no disrespect to anyone, but, you know, I'm thankful that we went through what we went through in order to get to where we're going and where we're at, you know. Right on, right on. Um, and I don't want to forget about mom. Is there anything yeah. quick that you want to say to mom? Yeah, uh, I was talking to her yesterday, but I just want to say to my mom that I understand too. I understand what mom was going through, having to choose between two things that she loved dearly, you know. And she did a, such a good job, actually, for 
for for what what circumstance she was in she did a really good job you know and she was the one i want to thank i want to thank mom for going to church first because mom was the one that went to church first and then brought me to church and if i never if she never did that and she stayed you know with her other religions and stuff i probably wouldn't be here today so i feel like mom saved my life well through god but mom saved my life so thank you mom thank you wow god is mom yeah. um so you're taking us to a garvey ranch park garvey ranch park yeah. why why are you taking us here uh that's a place that has a lot of memories for me good okay. memories and also some bad ones um tell us the good because we've heard the bad <laughs> yeah, we've heard well tell us yeah. both so over there, I would um, take like uh, Kempo classes, like karate classes as a kid, oh, and wow. uh, uh, also Muay Thai, which is yeah. like Thai boxing, you know. Yeah. And and it was um, it was really good, you know. I, I had that was the first time as a kid when I was fighting actually and sparring that I felt loved, you know. And that was also because of my mom. My mom tried to get us into these little programs with the little money that she did have. Yeah she would take us to these places and um i love that i made friends there everything was good but i noticed when i came out of that um you know and started running this i started running the streets as soon as i stopped going to those places you know yeah. so um yeah i want to go there and also it's ironically a place where i started gang banging basically I, really? I was i was put on basically there so um yeah it's kind of a place where it always reminds me of my past because now that I'm getting more views and people are congratulating me, like we just saw the dude, you know, yeah. walk up and say yes. he saw my, my interviews. Saw his show, yeah, right. saw the interview. Um, I realized that through the evil spirit, you know, God, uh, Satan, he tries to raise my heart. Like, hey, you did something good, homie. You're, 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 you're smart. You talk well, well yada, yada, whoop de whoop. Yeah. But I always have to remember who I was. Without God, I'm just a watching gang member who can would probably be buried in the prison you know what i mean yeah. or dead on the streets or strung out but i was so thankful that you know god actually wow. came into my life no no I, and i didn't mean to cut you off yeah. forgive me this is what is this is one of the memorials yeah one of the memorials this is monterey park right now this is barnes park actually i used to frequent this area too wow this is for those that don't know yeah. just days ago mm -hmm. There was a census act of violence. Yes. That, correct me if I'm wrong, but there were 10 people that were murdered. Am I correct on this? Yeah, and I think 10, it rose to 11, actually. 11, one, one was in critical, I think, and then he, they passed, so. 11 people that were murdered and 10 others were shot, right? Yeah, yeah. So a total of 21 people were shot. Yes. Over a census act of violence. Yeah. Maybe we're able to, um, in fact, do you know where that, that shooting took place? Uh, I do, actually. Yeah. I definitely would love to go there if um, you allow us to, after yeah, maybe after we see the park. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, absolutely. When things like that happen, you know, it, it, it pains me, it pains anybody that, that came from a lifestyle, you know, yeah. that, that wants to live like that because that's that's one of the main reasons why we do body driven. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to see good. Yeah. You know, we're trying to plan <clears throat> good in the world. Yeah. You know, we want to see better choices made. Yeah. We want to see better human beings. I'm not saying perfect because there's no one perfect. Let's be real. Sure. We're all gonna make mistakes. We're all gonna mess up. You know. Yeah. We're, I mean, we we fall daily. We're descendants of of Adam. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna mess up. Mm -hmm. And. Um, but our heart goes out to each and every family member that lost somebody just days ago. Yeah, 100%. From all of us at Bio Driven, myself, Hertz Media, I'm sure I can speak for Johnny as well. Yes. You know what, our, our sincerest, you guys have our sincerest condolences yeah. from the bottom of our heart. You guys are in our prayers and we are terribly sorry for each and every one of you guys' loss. Yeah. I just think it's a tragic thing, man, and I feel like um, not just for all the people lost, but, you know, when you commit a murder, also those people, you know, are going to be locked away forever, too, and 
I feel like everyone has internal issues, you know, and um, sadly it, it manifests into things like this where people can go and grab a gun and do senseless things, yeah. you know, so I just want to say, yeah, condolences to all the people that, you know, went through that were, you know, it's just a tragic day, man, honestly, and, and that's why I feel like it's important to fix people's hearts you know yeah. and instead of giving them money and things like yeah we need money but if you don't have that self-control if you don't have uh healing inside of the, the core of your heart yeah then, uh it's it's only just gonna get worse you know and, and that's how the world is flowing nowadays with the kids being the way they are and yeah you know the senseless hate crimes the senseless racism all that it stems from the heart bro. you know people don't just yeah. wake up and kill people if you have sin in your heart and you're an angry person, then it's going to directly impact what you think and how you feel and how you behave. So if you have ha ha hatred in your heart, <clears throat> you'll start feeling hate and then you'll start thinking hateful things. And in the end, you'll start behaving hatefully. And you'll start doing violence and all these yeah. things. So it's really important to fix the core issues, which is the core of the heart, not just help the outward things and put a Band-Aid on people. You know what I'm saying? So do you... Do you fear retaliation? Do I fear retaliation? Yeah. No, actually no. I don't. And that's because, Why not? Um, well for one, because you can't say Johnny that it's not gonna come. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't say yeah, that. I can't say it 100%. Because you know, there are there are people that you've hurt. Yeah. Let's be real. Absolutely. There are things that you have done that you can't take back. Right. Absolutely. You can't, there, there aren't, you know, I mean, there are some people, you know, if, if they've changed their lives, that, that will take a sorry. Right. That will say, you know what, I'm really sorry, you know what, and will say, I forgive you. Right. But there are people that won't. They won't, yeah. And you've done a lot. Mm hmm So why don't you fear retaliation? Uh, honestly, I feel like my life is not in my, in my hands, to be honest with you. Like, um, I've completely let it go to where if God is the one that allows everything, let's say somebody runs up to me and just shoots me, yeah. you know? Uh, I don't I don't see it outwardly. It's that person, but I see it as well God would have to allow that it's not the the bullet that kills me It's basically God letting me calling me up, you know, so am I ready for that? Absolutely, and 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 that's because um, God I feel like he cares and he, he watches over my life so yeah. if he if he find if he doesn't allow me the breath of air whether i get smoked whether i don't wake up from sleeping uh what can i do about that nothing if god is like you know what it's time for you to come up there's nothing i can do so what i focus on is pushing his message to the world because before i go i would like people to be free from my from this emptiness and yeah. this void that we feel so am i a fr I'm, I'm just a tool and i use yeah. this analogy a lot but like let's say a knife, you know, it's a tool, right? In the hands of its, if it's connected to a murder or a, a evil person, it's it's gonna be used to commit murder. Yeah. But if that same knife is connected to a doctor or a surgeon, it can save lives. We're just a tool. So me, I'm just a tool. I know that sounds crazy for some people because in this world, we're taught that we, we're we the masters and we gotta yeah. take care of our lives. And yeah, well, when, when I try to take care of my life and take responsibility for my life, what did I do? I joined a gang, I hurt people, went to prison, lived negatively. But when I realized and let go, you know what, God? I'm your son. Whatever you yeah. want me to do, handle it. And so when I started doing that, I started gaining homies, was at the homies baby shower, shout out. And I just was so thankful that God is rekindling and repairing every aspect of my life now of course there's when god works satan works too of course and do i fear his retaliation well god ultimately satan had to ask god for permission yeah. to hurt people yeah like that that means the almighty authority is god yeah. so am i afraid of god in that aspect no i feel like he'll protect me but if he doesn't well, that's also his will. That's what he feels like is the best. Who am I? I don't know what's what's best for me, actually. I think I know, but I don't. So let me let, let me ask you this. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> as, you know, you're a changed man now. Mm -hmm. You're no longer, you know, out there being being used by, as, as anyone would say, the devil. Right. So, and you said that you don't fear retaliation. Mm -hmm. So, since you don't fear... Let, let, well, let me just ask you this. Let's say someone put a gun to your head. Mm -hmm. 
and they said right now because this has actually happened yeah this has ha actually happened out in in, in in many countries yes different sure. countries yes and they put a gun in your head and you you're a soldier you've been through a lot you you've done a lot of so you know you don't you don't fear you don't fear much right if someone put a gun to your head johnny and they said you know what deny god mm -hmm. deny his son jesus and i ain't gonna pull this trigger mm -hmm. but if you don't i'm taking your life mm -hmm. what would you say to the individual holding that gun well i would tell them i can't deny that it's i physically emotionally mentally spiritually so you, i can't you would tell them to pull the trigger i mean i would say that and if what if they do it then they do it i'm pretty sure they would right if that's the case if that's the case it's either you deny or you or you get smoked so would you die for the lord uh i think i think i would why and why is that it's not because i'm spiritual and holy and a good person and i'm, I'm down or whatever but it's because god died for me that's right that's mm -hmm. awesome he died that's for me awesome. you know? and and he didn't that's kill awesome, you know me and you vince that's awesome we're uh that's we're awesome. deserving of death we are we uh, are for the things that we did yes. and even even if we didn't do those things everybody's born a sinner well where yes. do sinners go they go to hell that's right So we're deserving of that well wow. but instead of killing me and you he killed his son <laughs> he killed his only son he didn't kill me and you so why wouldn't i die for somebody like that honestly that's, that's heavy, the god brother. that i believe in let's get yeah. off and let's think it, let's yeah. walk around this park so right now we're in the name of this park again? Garvey Ranch Park. We're in Garvey Ranch Park. Monterey Park. Yeah. In beautiful Monterey Park. Yeah. Um, this is where, as Johnny basically said, this is where it kind of basically almost started for you, right? The, the yeah. neighbor lifestyle? Yeah, absolutely. So is it safe to say that you got jumped in here or you got you yeah, got in yeah. the neighborhood right here? Yeah, got put on here. Really? Yeah. Where was? Uh, where over that? where the basketball courts are, it used to be um, just a dirt pile. Really? So yeah, it was. Uh, so that's where it went down. Yeah. <laughs> good memories, huh? Yeah, good memories with the boys, with the fellas. You know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, what what other memories happened here, man? That you could. Um. So like I said, I, I had like there's a historical museum, but uh, in that same area, yeah, building there's uh there was Muay Thai, there was uh, Nippon Kempo. Yeah, it was it was great, man. And I, I made a lot of friends, childhood friends there. Um, and you took that as a child, and um, how, how long did you go to like go to you know to karate? Yeah. Oh, uh, I went there from when I was like five to wow. about like I think like ten, ten years old. Yeah. Wow. And so I have five years. I want to say. Wow. Yeah. Did you stay? Do you still practice that? No, nah, I don't. I don't practice that anymore. You, so it just got all that got thrown away with the gun. Yeah, pretty it, much. It was a joke, cause we, <laughs> You guys don't know Johnny, but Johnny's a character. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's all pretty much. Um, and you found it a lot more easier, right? Just like bam and just yeah, honestly, a lot less. <laughs> yeah, that's um, true. Not so much cardio work with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, there's cardio afterwards. There's <laughs> running and getting away. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, so wow, this is this is it, man. This is this is the park, man. This yeah. is it's so wow. much nicer now. I trip out because things have changed so much. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. From absolutely. when it was in the '90s to the, you know, the the, the 2000s. 2000s yeah. yeah. It has it has changed so much. 100. Do you do you, do you know? Does your neighborhood still like you know congregate here from time to time? No, no, no? not anymore. If yeah, people don't really go to parks. I mean, it's and that's a good thing. Everything's yeah. gotten gentrified, and, and yeah. you know, a lot of things have happened. Murders have happened here and, yeah. and stuff like that, but. You know, as we see, it's peaceful. I see my people, you know, kids playing around, and, and right. it makes me happy, man. It makes exactly, me happy. exactly. And it's all, all Asian. You know, this area is mainly Asian, so yeah. mainly Chinese and, and Vietnamese. So yeah, I'm happy to see all that. It brings back a lot of good memories. You, know? you, you were yeah. saying that there was murders that <clears throat> took place here. Mm -hmm. Did you lose any homeboys here? Uh, I didn't personally lose any homeboys here. Um, no. But there were some some things that have happened that here. That happened here? Yeah, yeah, and, and stuff like shootouts and stuff yeah. like that. But yeah right on right on yeah. um well where are we, where are we going to next johnny uh let's do um asian youth center AYC. asian youth center yeah yeah we'll go there let's yeah ayc let's go wow but anyway there's a pizza hut right behind this vehicle and 
as we pulled up, you said you shared that your mom used to work there. Yeah, my mom when she first came and, and we were struggling, and so she worked here at this pizza delivering pizzas. Let me let me ask. That's one thing we didn't touch on. How was it, you know, having two immigrant parents coming over here, mm-hmm. and man, having to having to provide for two two boys? Yeah, it was tough. They would fight all the time, you know, and and. Uh, they were just trying to make ends meet, and it was really hard for them. You know, my mom worked a lot, and my dad worked a lot. So they also, you know, my dad was like a functioning alcoholic, you know? Yeah. But it was just bad, man. It was bad. But, yeah, that's the Pizza Hut there. And, and I, it brings back a lot of memories because it's like she went through things like, um, you know, Asians, they take off their shoes. Yeah. So when she would deliver pizzas out of respect, she didn't know, you know, like that they don't, some people don't take off their shoes. So she would take off her shoes. And this is in this area where there was a lot of uh, uh, gang members, you know, yeah. and, and different gangs, uh, Hispanic hoods and whatnot. Yeah. And yeah, she would go in there and, and she, she would, like she would come home and I could see that my mom was like terrified, you know, but wow. she had no other job at the time. So she was delivering pizzas, pizzas. And, and all for us. And that's when I started to think like, man, my mom, she did love us, you know, otherwise yeah. she wouldn't provide like that, you know? And, and yeah, she took a lot of risks basically. By delivering pizzas, um, was it, did, I guess, you know, maybe, I mean, you know, even me thinking, I, I don't know how I'd feel, you know, if someone came delivering my pizza with no shoes on. So yeah. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. She, you know was, she, saying? Was, she was doing it in a respectful way. Yeah. But she really didn't, I guess, understand the culture over here. Yeah, she didn't. She didn't understand the culture. And she was like, oh, this is her house and we you take off respect, our shoes. Yeah. Gotta, so at the door, she'll take off her shoes, you know, and then um, sometimes they're in the back or she'll go through the side or, you know, something like that. And yeah. even then, you know, or there'll be a back house or something. And yeah. So, yeah, she would do that. And, and um, yeah, she would tell me stories like how scary it was, you know, and I'm like, don't take off your shoes, you know, but but that's how traditionally influenced we are. You know, she kept the culture like. Yeah. And she's just like, don't take like that sounded absurd to her. Like, don't take off your shoes. Whereas to other people, it's like, why are you taking off your shoes? You're in the hood. Like, you're in a bad area. What are you doing? You know, but she didn't think about it like that. And that's how a lot of these these Asians out here started to migrate into these these low income places, yeah. you know, because they didn't understand the, the culture, you know. So, yeah. Where are you taking us to? Uh, we're going to Asian Youth Center, AYC. Why are we going there? <clears throat> so that spot. It's kind of where my also like had a, uh, you know, when I was when I was um, out and out from YA, I had to um, do a lot of, uh, you know, like counseling and, and, you know, just court ordered things. Right? Yeah. And volunteering and stuff. So um, probation on me with probation officers, etc. So this was a place that brought all the Asian gang members and not just Asian gang members, some Hispanic, like Mexican gang yeah. members all together. <laughs> and so I would go here and it was a lot of memories here. You know, um, we all had to kind of get along because yeah, we're enemies and stuff, but yeah. our POs are like literally right there. And, and yeah. you know, our, um, yeah, it was a lot of community service. It's a great, it's a great place, man. They help gang members. It's kind of like the Asian, uh, homeboys Industries, if you will, you know, it's kind of like a spot like that. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Right on. Um, and do you do you still live out here in, in the neighborhood out here? So uh, I stay out in Alhambra, but you know, I'm also in between Alhambra and um, like the San Fernando Valley as yeah. well. Yeah. Oh, right on. Yeah. So in between, you know, those areas. <laughs> I remember this 99 Ranch right here. Uh, there's a, all this building is new, but there was a 99 Ranch over here. And I remember vivid memories, man, stealing from here and stealing from this Hawaii supermarket and <laughs> just like doing, you know, doing knucklehead stuff yeah. as a kid, you know. I remember years ago, I walked into one of these supermarkets mm-hmm. and I walked out. <laughs> not because no I'm, i i didn't i didn't know how to shop in the, yeah. the store i walked in there and i was like what the hell <laughs> why you you find that amusing that's so funny bro he because, said that's so because funny. i heard that from so many so many people. yeah i walked in there and i was like hey yes i don't remember what i was at they just looked at me like i didn't like i came from somewhere else <laughs> 
And I just was like, I looked around and I said, man, I didn't understand that, what the heck they had there. So I just said, you know, I'm a bounce, man. This isn't, <laughs> I go, I don't think I'm going to be able to buy anything here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they would sell like rattlesnake in here. Yeah, they and, sell and all kinds of rabbits yeah. and <laughs> like straight so up. You you've know. ate that stuff. I've eaten rattlesnake. I've I haven't eaten. What rabbit. does rattlesnake taste like? Honestly, bro, it's it's you can't knock it till you try it, man. It's, well, uh, when are you gonna take us out for some rattlesnake? Hey, you want some rattlesnake, Mario? <laughs> hey, well, I mean, we're driving. I mean, where, where's a good place to get rattlesnake out here? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not out here, but when I was in China. <laughs> John, but yeah. We're gonna get some rattlesnake. I know, right? But you it know? tastes like a, a, uh, like fish? a fish and chicken mix, like mixed together. A fish and chicken yeah. mix? Yeah, bro. Wow. If you can kind of, you know, like wrap your head around it, yeah. it tastes like fish and chicken mix, then they it's actually really good. <laughs> they don't sell that at Ralph's, do they? <laughs> uh, out here, honestly, like, if you go to Alhambra, Monterey Park, I mean, everywhere has their spots, you know, but Asian yeah. food out here is hands down the best, man. And I say that with, you know, all respect to everybody else. Like that, this place it has the best food, man. I got to take you guys one of these days to, you know, to like uh, Mr. Dragon, Noodle House. Um, they got Noodle World. We got Bacali's, all kinds of places, bro. So uh, right now we're at Asian Youth Center. Asian Youth Center. Mm -hmm. Right on. So this is where all the, I guess, when you get in trouble, you come here. Yeah, all the local. And you said all the, you know, even Rasa even would come here, correct? Yes, yes. But the majority was, was Asian. Asian, yeah. Asian. Yeah. yeah. Right on. Yes, so this sir. was one of those instances where we were outnumbered. Yeah, pretty right much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For sure. Um, what, um, you brought us here. What, tell us about this place. So this place kind of like, um, I took a little bit of counseling here and, and, you know, did some basketball and, you know, just they try to give back to the, the community, you know, and um, I had a lot of um, good mentors out here, believe it or not, you know, and at least the short time that I was out and um, you kind of start to meet people that you know and you recognize even from different hoods, you know, and even though they were enemies technically, but right here we kind of had to keep it all peaceful, you know, because of the 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 police here and yeah. the, you know the the PO and stuff like that, but that yeah, just was something that that was a big part of my childhood coming to the Asian Youth Center, and I'm thankful to them. You know they're closed today. I didn't know, but I wanted to maybe meet some people here. Yeah. But yeah, I'm pretty sure some of the people are still there because they dedicate their life's work to the youth. You know, it's yeah. called the Asian Youth Center. So yeah, and that's a that that <clears throat> that's kind of what I want to do. I learn from them to kind of give back to the youth because that's the next generation. Exactly. You know? So. Yeah, exactly. Yes, That's sir. where I kind of feel that that, you know, I kind of feel like we failed a lot, you know, and I can only speak for myself, you know, that it's I think uh, I personally have failed a lot of the, the youngsters. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. just my opinion for sure. You know, yeah. um, people may be very different and say, Vince, you're doing something good or whatever. Right. But, you know, it's never too late to try, yeah. you know. Absolutely. So that's what we're trying to do, we're body driven, you know what I'm saying? Bring something positive uh, and as each individual tells their story and, uh, yeah. you know, the story's from the heart, man. Absolutely. Um, so before we wrap up, we are going to go and head out to one more place. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's uh, the memorial for um, of the, the shooting that just happened uh, days ago. Yeah. Um, and I know you talked about it briefly on the way over here. Um, I mean, is there anything else you want to comment on it or anything you really? Uh, yeah, just, you know, um, hopefully going over there and just showing our support, you know, and, and I pray that we can um, just kind of for the families to find peace, man, yeah. who went through that, because at the end of the day, they're the ones that are most That's impacted. Suffering. Yeah, and oh, we'll keep them in their prayers. I hope you guys, you know, at, at Body of Driven can keep them in their in our prayers, too. and. and um, yeah, I hope that we can spread more positivity so things like this stop happening. It's really tragic. It's really tragic. No, no, know. most definitely. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Let's, uh, let's head over there. of the the mass shooting that happened a few days ago 
Um, you know, looking behind me, I gotta be honest, um, there's just, there's something in the air, you know, you just feel, there's just very somber, very, uh, very heartbreaking um, to know that so many lives were lost and for no reason, no reason at all. Um, being here and, you know, these are, okay, you know, these, these are your people, you know, not saying they're not mine, but you know what I mean. Right. These are your people. This is your, you know, yeah. your background, where you come from. Do you, do, how does it make you feel? Are you, are you sad? Are you angry? Or what are you feeling right now? Pretty overwhelmed. I think it's a mixture of emotions, you know. I feel angry, I feel sad, confused as well. Yeah. Why is this happening? And, you know, I just feel like it's it's I'm at a loss for words, honestly. It's, it's heartbreaking, yeah, it's you know. Hard. And it's as as you go over there and you're gonna see, you know, when you see the, the faces of the victims, you see the 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 letters you see the messages on the ground it's uh it's it's very moving it's um to think that something like this in in our day and age is it's still happening you know and for for no for no good reason you know um it don't matter if you're mexican black white brown asian it don't matter nobody deserves to have their life taken from them and that's the honest truth um Let's, uh, let's get a closer look. Man. Man. Reading these messages. Wow, look at it. Jesus saves. That's the truth. You know? If there's anything that we need more than ever, and that's God. That's the honest truth. You know? Um... We see, uh, you know, the names of all the of all the victims. You know, all the people who have been taken from us. Wow. We're going to be headed back now to basically end on this note. Um, believe me, I wish we weren't. Thank you and uh, God bless you, Kana. Let's let's head back. Just want to say um, thank you guys, you know, Audio Driven and Hertz Media, you know, for allowing me on the platform, and also just um, our prayers go out to the families. And rest in peace to everybody that was affected by this. So we just got back. Um, thank you, Johnny, yeah. for uh, taking us around your your barrio. You know, we My truly actually appreciate it. You know, um, you know, from going to the AYC, uh, going to the park, the apartments. Um, man, just so many memories were were starting to come back to you. Yeah. Um, if there was, um, and I know we talked about a bunch of different of them. Is there one that you think that you missed from many of those locations that you took us to? That I missed? Mm. Yeah, probably like South Courts where we would fight a lot. <laughs> really? Yeah, we get to catch a lot of fades when I was young. And maybe Almanzer, um, play basketball. I used to play basketball there for a little bit and, and fought a lot too. And fought a lot too. <laughs> it's all fights. A lot of war yeah. stories. Yeah, <laughs> I would say. Yeah, uh -huh. before we leave, have, have you ever been shot or stabbed? That was one thing that I had forgot to ask you. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been stabbed before. Been yeah. stabbed before? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, where, where were you stabbed at, Johnny? Uh, so on this side and on my hip. On your hip? Yeah. I noticed, I had noticed the scar. Yeah. When we went after, when, yeah. yeah. What, what happened that night? Uh, it was it was a group of people, you know. I was, I, they, I'll be honest, they caught me. They caught me slipping, you know. It was one against like seven, eight, something like that. Wow. Yeah, it's, you know, so. 
and they yeah. caught you. Yeah, they and caught me. They did their thing, man. You know, and that was an enemy, yeah. a rival, a rival neighborhood. Yeah, it's rival, rival enemy gang. Yeah. Wow. Well, it's it's um, thank God you're still alive. Yes, amen. Um, if there was one thing that you could tell the the viewer, you know, mm -hmm. um, and also. And I'm sorry, because sometimes, you know, doing the show, sometimes the questions will start, you know, coming back. Sure. Before you answer that, if if a youngster from your neighborhood, mm -hmm. you know, you, you've done a lot of time, you've done a lot of work for your neighborhood, you, you've put in a lot of work. Sure. You know, you've seen a lot. You, you, you've you been through the trenches. You, you've done your prison time. You've done your YA time. Mm -hmm. you, you, you've done a lot. Mm -hmm. If a youngster came up to you and said, hey, yo, man, you know what, homie? I look up to you, homie. Mm -hmm. You know what? F all these people, you know what, I'm gonna go kill, homie, just like, just like you did, my boy. I mean, I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna put in work, homie, and I'm gonna put fools in the ground, homie. I look up to you, my boy. Mm. Thank you. What would you tell him? I'd tell him, uh, man, you don't know me. <laughs> you don't, what you saw is not the truth, you know, and, and it was something that I'm not proud of. And if you really wanna be happy, if you really wanna be thankful of things, you gotta start thinking about other people um, over yourself, you know? Um, and, and I would tell him, yeah, I, that wouldn't be the right thing to do. And um, tell him straight up, come to church with me, you know, wow. and come to church and, and you'll see. You'll see how I'm able to live and why I'm able to be respected. And, and it wasn't because of those things, you know, fear and respect is two different things. You yeah. know what I mean? People can fear you, but it doesn't mean that they respect you. Respect you. You know, so uh, I think when you really think about it, um, you know, you can't trust yourself. I'll tell the kid, I, if you want to live that way, it's very simple. You just got to believe in yourself and, and believe your, your word above the word of God. And you'll, you'll live like a monster for sure. But I, at the end, there is consequences to it. You know, I just got stabbed and whatnot, but you could end up getting shot. You could end up doing all day in prison. You could hurt everybody around you. And if that's really what you want, then I mean, I can't stop you, but I believe that that's not what you really want. You know what I mean? So. That's, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Um, I don't even think that you have to say more, but if mm -hmm. there is, mm -hmm. the camera's yours, Johnny. Yeah. Just my message, you know, closing message would be that, you know, we're people who are born into, into evil and we all have different backgrounds. You know, not everyone here viewing will be a gang member. Yeah. But one thing that we're all interconnected with is the struggle. Everybody has some kind of struggle, whether it's with gangs, addiction, violence, lust, whatever it is. But I wanted people to understand that because we're interconnected, it's okay that we struggle, but that is why God came down and died for us, you know, and He made us perfect through the Bible. Hebrews chapter 10, 17, it says we're perfected forever, them that are sanctified. So um, we really need to believe that i feel like in order to be free i'm not better than anybody else on this podcast or anyone but what i do know is that when i became connected to god uh, and i started to live in a positive lifestyle then positive things started to come out and nowadays i'm helping people and and i'm really no better than anybody else but i want them to understand that yeah that, that all of our sins past present and future are washed away now i'm not saying you could sin however you want but what i'm saying is when you have that relationship with God, you start to think for other people. Is this what God would want me to do? Is this, you know, does, is he happy with this? And as we think for other people, we ourselves start to heal, start to live better. And, every, and the world just becomes a better place, honestly. So uh, do us a, a favor and uh, give Johnny a follow. Um, where can the people follow you? Whatever it is that you're into, what, sure. you know, promoting. Yeah. Uh, so I got a Instagram. You guys can reach out to me. It's at no script script like writing no script fellowship um, And um, you guys follow me on my YouTube channel. It's called righteous nomad and also I, I Inherited the the hoodstocks uh, street lamp podcast So if you guys go to hoodstocks, you can find my podcast there. It's called the street lamp podcast with Johnny Chang So um, yeah, you guys can reach out to me anytime Give him a follow. Johnny, you. thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you, man. Absolutely. Brother. God bless you. Appreciate you. This is Body Driven.